Hi, I'm Michael from Team 3042. I'm our lead strategist this year, and I'd like to talk about what we're doing this year for the game and how we think other teams are going to play this game. So this year is a really interesting game that I've seen from all the ones that I've been in, in that the f various objectives can actually affect your ranking score through ranking points. And that's a very big part of what we're doing and how we think the game's going to be played, because obviously during the qualifications, breaching and ca tower def capturing are going to be major focuses to make sure that you get as high as possible on those rankings. The second tiebreaker is autonomous, which won't necessarily be as feasible because you have to get through the defenses to reach the tower and shoot. So we're guessing that the average teams will probably score 10 points in autonomous, which leads to our final major uh, tiebreaker covering, which is the scaling and, climb, scaling and challenging. Scaling and challenging is going to be interesting as well because of the various ways that you can actually go about climbing the tower and whether or not robots are going to be able to do that. However, since we're anticipating that not many teams are going to get a ton of points in Autonomous, it's going to be very important for them to be able to climb or score as many points with their alliance through scaling and challenging as possible. A general idea of how I think this game is going to be played is that during qualifications, the outer works are going to be breached as the highest goal because of the time that it takes to get a ball and go back to the tower unless, of course, you're stealing from the secret passage. And that takes a lot of time. We figured it takes you... You have about 115 seconds to score those uh, balls before you have to go and try to challenge or scale the tower. And that leaves you about 16.3 or 16.4 seconds to get your ball from the side, sh uh, cross a defense, shoot it, cross the defense again, and then get another ball. That's not a lot of time. So we figure that Outer Works is going to be a big focus because it's going to get you the biggest bang for your buck uh, time-wise. One ranking point, 40 scoring points, and then there's lots of other things you could do. Our team wants to try and focus on that, and we also want to be able to do the tower at the end. And the way we're doing that is that we're having, making sure to build a really good driving state, uh, drive base. And the reason for that is two of the four categories are focused on driving over completely. You don't need manipulators for them. It's very basic, and we, need to make we want to make sure that we can do those well without manipulators to save us on space. The next two are categories are a bit more tricky, and we're working out on how to do those. We think we figure a way to, to do the category C ones, uh, which are the drawbridge and the sally port, by having us open them, them from the opponent's courtyard and other robots crossing from the neutral zone, which should, if we read the rules properly, uh, count as scoring. We've not quite gotten category to category A yet, but we're working on it. And then, now we get to the tower. This is where it gets fun. In the tower, we, or for shooting, scoring the tower, we've decided to do a flywheel with an adjustable hood. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can change the range add backs, and add backspin to the ball from various different areas of the field to get a better sh scoring. At the end, we're hoping to try and squeeze in a climbing mechanism, but we're not focusing on it too much because we think that as far as uh, the playoffs go, it's not going to be a major part of the game. So for defense and the outer works. Defense and the outer works is going to be very interesting this year because it relies a lot on scouting information and how the teams are going to be able to cross them. Since you don't choose your own outer works that you're going to cross, you choose the ones that your opponents have to cr cross. And the way we, basic outline of how we decided we're going to do this is to have two be the hardest, 
four be the second hardest, and five be the easiest. Right now, we're anticipating the Cheval de Free to be the hardest one, so we're going to be placing that in two. Unless, of course, we need, um, unless, of course, we need the port colors up, which will go in four to limit visibility of our points. And the reason that we've decided this is we're trying to uh, reduce the accuracy and increase the speed, or increase the amount of time it takes for shooters to get into a position to fire on the tower. You see, five has the least amount of space to line up in comparison to two. So we want to push them as far up the map as we can uh, to, increase the time, to increase the time that it takes to get over to that spot.